The blinds of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone True Well. And salutations to the old for the elect out there, man. You Akim to Zadakim that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the priest Shimon, and this is going to be a response to the apostle Elder Tahar's show, The Lord Hates a Lukewarm Brother. Just finished watching it, um, had the, you know, the headphones playing, and the spirit was so heavy on me to just say something on it, you know, scripturally, bring out a few definitions. And what I was meditating upon is, you know, that's that's what's happening with brothers that have that lukewarm demon on them. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much what happened is, is a spirit that's calling them to action. Look, prophesy, do something. And what they're doing is they're getting relaxed and relaxed about it and finding all means of excuse. You know what I'm saying? It's not the spirit to be in, man. If the spirit hits you, find a way. You know what I'm saying? As you can see, you know, the screen recording is 308 a.m. All right, not p.m. a.m. I work overnight. And I'm on my lunch break, man. I said, look, you know what? I'm going to squeeze in. You know, a quick little lesson, quick little means of edification. You know, I always tell myself, you know, through the spirit, we go our, our way for other things. You know what I'm saying? A bad bitch might be calling you, and you could drive through the th you could drive through the snow for some pussy. All right, you wake up in the morning for some pussy. Guys will leave work for some pussy or get this job. You know, call. You know, stuff to, stuff to satisfy your flesh. But when it comes to this work, you know, it's not that same form of enthusiasm, you know. You might work five days a week, hit the gym four days a week, and you're only obligated to do the show three days a week, but yet you can't find the time, you know. So, at the end of the day, the most side knows everybody's heart, but that, honestly, man, that's just a fucking demon, man. It's a demon that's making you lazy. It's a demon that's giving you excuses, all right, and it's a, it's a demon that's making you spiritually fatigued and lax, thinking, okay, I've been here a while, or, um... You know, nothing's going to happen to me. That's not the mindset to have, man, all right? The mindset to have is this thing is deadly serious. And as the apostle says, the most I hate a lukewarm motherfucker, man, all right? Um, fatigue, all right? This is in the Webster Dictionary, fatigue, because, you know, you could be spiritually fatigued. After a while, this thing could become a burdensome and, you know, heavy on your mind, and you just don't even want to deal with it. So this is the definition for fatigue. For noun fatigue latin fatigo it seems to be an ally to fatisco if so the sense is a yielding or relaxing <laughs> so yielding you're submitting to satan man all right you're submitting to those demons in your mind and here it is the spirit you know the spirit's like a wind the spirit's like a river and it's flowing and it's saying look now it's your time to get in you know like you're on a basketball team coach says okay you're in you know you're just like coach i don't want to play man i'm tired you know what i'm saying that's how the spirit is working the spirit is okay now you got to get it now you got it you know and you can't resist that calling when the spirit's on you and the spirit's saying do it so you go for it man don't say don't put off the lord day by day as the apostle quoted in the scripture it says one weariness with bodily labor or mental exertion lassitude or exhaustion of strength we suffer fatigue of the mind as well as of the body and that is true you could be fatigued in your mind fatigued in your body so is there, there is a when i say spiritually fatigued i'm talking about not doing shows for pro pro um, elongated time, man. I'm not. I'm not talking about you didn't do a show one day or two days in a row, but prolong, and right, and you become more and more lax and fatigued. That you know, okay, I'm only gonna just go out and now, you know, now I'm only gonna go out twice a week, three times a week. You know what I'm saying? And so on and so forth. Till next thing you know, you're completely lax and you're back in the world. And it's happened times and times again. And you don't want to be another example of that. I know I sure don't. That's why I'm doing this lesson. It says the cause of weariness, labor, toil, as the fatigue of war. And this is the spiritual war we in, man. All right, so even all this guy, Malak Shah said that, man, you know, standing out there and going out there and he was studying too much and you know, everything was hurting and just bitching up, you know, to the point that, look, no more shows. Been months since these guys do shows, man. All right. It says the labors of military men distinct from the, the use of arms as a party of men on fatigue. Look, if you're a true prophet of the Heavenly Father, you ain't going to make no excuses, man. Just straight up. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know, yo, look, I say this, man. You got a brother in the camp, Elder Barack Abar, He's in a physical state that, you know, most people in the world can't deal with. Yet, man finds time to do shows, you know what I'm saying? So that's a great example, all right? You got brothers that have multiple jobs that do shows. You got to always find a way to put the Lord first because this is why we're here, man. This is what we live for. Ecclesiastic is the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. To fear the most sign, keep his commandments. Everything else is secondary, man. I don't give a fuck what it is, all right? And the Most High, Yahweh Shah is an austere man. He doesn't deal with excuses. All right? Fatigued, tired, to weary with labor or, or any bodily or mental exertion. To harass with toil, to exhaust the strength by severe or long continued exertion. To weary by importunity, to harass. So, you know, 
spiritual weariness, man. Or this thing, man, it's too much, man. It's, you know, or ultimately just becoming lax, lack of day school. You don't want to participate in things no more. Coach, I don't want to be in it's too much. I'm tired, you know. Here it is. The Lord is tapping you, calling you. But what you're doing is you're resisting the Lord. So with that, I'm going to bring this. Ecclesiasticus 4 and 26. 26. It says, be not ashamed to confess thy sins, right? To the most high first and foremost because the catholic church will tell you go in some secret box somewhere and tell some pedophile priest all your all your deepest darkest secrets now nah, confess your secrets to the most high first and foremost in prayer and and repent is the primary thing of those sins don't just keep doing them it says enforce not the course of the river now that's the part i want to bring out force not the course of the river so the spirit might flow on you and you just want to put up a dam and you know nah you know what man let this brother i'm gonna wait till this brother do the show or i'm pretty sure brother's gonna do that so you fought you resisting the holy spirit you know what i'm saying you're thinking like you know what you know a brother's gonna speak on that i don't gotta do that or you know i you know i already did shows on that you're resisting it you don't want to do that you know if it hits you it hits you you go for it you know no matter what the scenario just like if a bad bitch was to hit you up and you know it you'd be real you'll find some sort of way to go smash you know we got one more like I said, this one was quick, man. I'm on a job. Amos 3 and 8. The lion hath roared. Who will not fear? The Lord Yahweh Bashimah Shah has spoken. And who can but prophesy? And that's the time we're in. Right? Second Ezra 15 chapter. Starts at 1. It tells you. Right? Speak down the ears of my people. The words of prophecy. The word prophecy means to say before. So we're looking at news and current events. Aligning with the scriptures. And we bring out, okay, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Warn the people. All right? The scriptures tell you, um... Uh, what does it say in Habakkuk, the second chapter? Let me go ahead and get it, man, about, you know, them running. You know, because the vision is yet for a point of time. Is it? Okay, here it goes. Habakkuk 2 and 2, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. So you have brothers that's going to take this knowledge up and run with it, all right, continue to teach it. And when we prophesy this, this thing to the nations in the two-thirds, they're going to take off like fucking cockroaches when the lights are on. They're going to run, man, all right, because they don't want to hear their future judgment. But the primary thing out there is to go out there and prophesy. There's so much going on in the news right now. So much going on with the Middle East, Turkey, Russia, Syria, you know, Brexit. There's just a lot of shit popping off. So you look at scriptures, all right, and you say, okay, this is going to lead to that. That's going to lead to that because that's what the Lord wants us to do, to warn the people and warn us elect. All right, that was just straight into the point, man. I got to get back to work. Uh, so I can get back to the, you know, at least get some parts of my breaking. So I'm going to say all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashim, Rekak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, true well, and citations to the hopeful elect out there, man. You Akim, Tazadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. Brother, stay strong. Pray to the most high that you don't get fatigued and lax and get booted out of there. You know, we all got to pray for each other. So with that, Shalom.